Hello, and welcome to Creepy Core and Folklore, the show about creatures, encounters, old tales, and myths. I'm your host, Iona Wayland, a dark fantasy author, mental health professional, and overall curious person. I want to join other spooky souls and hear about these unusual stories. Hello, spooky soul. I'm excited to introduce you to linguist, folklore lover, and friend of the pod, Jay. Welcome, Jay. I'm honored you're here. Thanks for speaking with me and the fellow spooky soul who's listening. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm <laughs> excited, nervous, and honored. <laughs> uh, my name is Jay. You can also call me Myth. Um, I am indeed a linguist with a bachelor's degree. I am a translator and I specialize in comparative linguistics and comparative mythology, which is also why I'm here. <laughs> I'm so excited that you're here. I was like, so our interests overlap greatly. We need to. Oh, try yeah. this. Also, um, for the spooky soul who's listening, you may remember that I brought up J or myth um, and myth is short for myth interpreted, which I think it's so punny um but I mean, that is the point that is definitely the pun. point you're like a pun <laughs> king but it was just funny because um uh myth has helped me with like multiple ways of pronunciation whenever i'm like listen i'm lost i tried this multiple times <laughs> i'm not doing it right and they'll like do this really good like breakdown of how to pronounce certain things so anytime that they've helped me i've always <laughs> tried to like be like thanks myth and throw that in there so if you ever hear a thanks myth in the future this is who i'm talking about yep it's me (laughs) it's you (laughs) well something that i wanted to have you here on the podcast about are the themes related to underworlds or other worlds and but first before we get more into that why don't you tell us a bit about the underworld and how it shows up in folklore yeah, so like the underworld or the other worlds, depends on like uh, your culture, is essentially like the place where souls go where they die. Mm-hmm. Like that's the short, simple version of it. Um, it really, it really de- depends on what it looks like. Um, like underworld is specifically a world below our world. It's subterranean. That's mm-hmm. in the name. Whereas other world is like overlaps with our world but it's like slightly uh what's the word uh unsynchronized Mm -hmm. so it's like weird like time doesn't run right things don't look the way they should they act different they look slightly different you know that's like the spooky stuff that's usually more like the Mm -hmm. face stuff oh that's a good example of it because i was trying to imagine like i know there's been like um like in Coraline, like the other mother kind of thing, where it's mm. like a parallel of this world, but off, or like maybe there's some uncanny valley between what's real and what's not. But the Fey realm being an other world is very interesting and having that overlap, but like kind of an invisible overlap. That's really interesting. Yeah, and then- it's most prevalent in like Celtic mythology because mm-hmm. like you can literally just walk into the other world and accidentally end up there. That happens. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my nightmare there's a good story about it i will tell you later oh, i'm so excited and then whenever you brought up underworld being subterranean the first time like i knew what that meant but the first time i looked at it in more of like a more of like a folklore lens was when i was doing like biblically accurate angels and it was mm-hmm. talking about like celestial terrestrial and then subterrestrial i didn't kind of like put that together as three different realms until i was doing research on that and so it's really cool that you know more about because i really don't know a lot about it which is why i'm <laughs> super pumped that you're here because i'm here to like <laughs> soak in this information oh thank uh, you well this is pride month when this comes mm-hmm. out um, and now, actually. So happy Pride, it everybody. <laughs> happy Pride. I <laughs> love it. Well, um, but something that I noticed is that there's this, like, change in, like, taking back the underworld or taking back the other world, so to speak, because there's, like, this concept of condemnation 
Um, but there's been a bit of a twist in the narrative now. So like there are minority groups, um, specifically like what we're talking about are queer minority groups where if they don't conform or assimilate, they're kind of like threatened with damnation or being sent somewhere else, whatever that elsewhere will be. Mm -hmm. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about how there are themes of like the other world in queer culture? Well, the thing about that is like um like the under like queer culture being like bad and stuff is specifically originating in Christianity. Like I'm not trying to badmouth Christianity mm-hmm, as a faith mm-hmm. here. It's the doctrine of like being different is bad and mm-hmm. corrupted by evil and all that. Mm-hmm. So most cultures don't actually have like an explicit queer people go to the bad place kind of story mm-hmm. that's 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 specifically a christian thing mm-hmm. most of the time mm-hmm. i mean for example like judaism is the uh precursor of christianity if you will but in judaism there is no hell they mm-hmm. don't believe in eternal damnation and they actually have like as many as six genders or eight depending mm-hmm. on how you count that is in in the talmud the talmud is the uh law book of judaism mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which I really only know because I am ethnically Jewish. I'm not mm-hmm. really not Jewish by faith. Mm-hmm. I am actually pagan. <laughs> <laughs> Join so, us, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's, um, pagan is just like a weird hodgepodge of of faiths. Actually, <laughs> that's how I look at it too. Mm. Yeah, so like in uh, in the Talmud you have um Zachar, which is man or male, and mm-hmm. then on the other hand you have Nekeva, which is female or woman. Mm-hmm. And then in between that you have um Androgynos, which mm-hmm. is just andro- androgynous. androgynous. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds right. And that is someone who has like both male and female characteristics, mm-hmm. either like physically or in presentation. Mm-hmm. And then you have the, like the opposite of that is Tumtum. Which is someone who does not have clear <gasps> sexual characteristics. I've characteristics. heard of Tum Tum. Oh, so I didn't someone... know what that was. <laughs> cool. Sorry, I'm just interrupting because I'm so excited, <laughs> but okay. also it's keep totally going. Okay. <laughs> and then you have, um, like, Tum Tum is just like specifically vague, it's obscured. Mm-hmm. That's what it means. Um, and then you have Ailonit, and that is a woman who does not get, like, um, puberty if you will so it could be mm-hmm. um like a woman who is actually a trans woman or mm-hmm. it could be an intersex woman and then the uh, the opposite of that one is saris which is like a trans man or an intersex man cool and like that's just like there in judaism and judaism is give or take six thousand years old yeah see we've been around for a while <laughs> we have <laughs> So it's it's interesting where like what I'll see is um with the whole like introduction of more of a condemning type of Christianity I guess I'll mm. specify because there are tons of wonderful beautiful Christians out there that are like loving and giving it's just fantastic people and mm-hmm. it's just like the condemnation side of it was kind of being pushed into like the lore of like oh well if you don't assimilate if you aren't same with us then you'll go to a bad place and Mm -hmm. then when in like recent history and i'm sure it's happened before but this is just like me noticing i've seen twists on that negative afterlife um and like what that would mean such as like lil nas x and like the powerpuff (laughs) girls like oh yeah (laughs) and shows like sabrina the teenage witch like just to Mm -hmm. name a couple examples i mean there are a shit ton of examples but there are like content creators that show their versions of like what it would look like um to sin and end up in like the bad place and it's always interesting because <laughs> yeah. it's these like really judgy like harmful people that like hurt others and those kinds of things so it's really interesting mm-hmm. that it comes down to that and most of those content creators are queer and i thought that was like a cool spin on things um like Stanzi Potenza, for example, if anyone wants to for check example, them out. Yeah. I also really enjoyed this content creator called Sia Later, and C spelled as in C as in the ocean. Oh, cool. 
she has a boat or had a boat. That's why. And she has a series called Hell's Bells. And it's about a, a group of girls essentially having a, a uh, help desk with double L in hell. Oh my gosh, I love that! <laughs> Where they just, like, deal with Karens all day and they just get to yes. mouth off of them and it's so funny. <laughs> it's cathartic to watch! It's Because it's all the brilliant. things that you're like, do you not see what you're doing? But yes, I love that. Um, it's a fantastic series. It's on TikTok. Oh, I'm gonna have to check shit. that out because I haven't heard of her before, so I'm really gonna have to check out their content because that sounds. I will. S- I will send you a link to her profile. It's it's super. Thank funny. you. <laughs> I'm so excited <laughs> to get. Um, and I think there was uh Mason Denver. I think they're another one where um they do. I think they're like they have like a nice mixture of like masculine and feminine energy. Mm. Um, they like do great makeup looks, but they're like really strong and kind of like a beefy person. Like they're like really neat. Oh yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And they're, they do like a lot of good stuff where they're like, they play like the part of a demon. It's just really fun. Mm. So like taking back, you know, what, like we belong here. If mm-hmm. you send it, send us somewhere, we're going to thrive anyway. And we have our own code of like what makes a good person what makes a bad person too that to to think about so i think that's like very empowering but um i'm just like really curious to know what your favorite underworld story like that you want me and the spooky soul who's listening to know about okay so there are a few and (laughs) i'm ready for all of them (laughs) So, um, the first one, and I may ramble about this because this has so many connections, is mm-hmm. uh, probably, like, the oldest story there is written down. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, actually the oldest, because this is when writing was invented. <laughs> Which is why my job exists. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so, the culture we're talking about is the ancient Sumerian culture, or mm-hmm. later Akkadian, and after that Babylonian, and Babylon... Babel shows up in the Bible, mm-hmm. like that's where it's, that's the the original culture there. Mm-hmm. Um, they invented a writing called cuneiform, which in Dutch, my own language, is called nail scripts because it looks like the old nails. It's oh, funny. interesting. And basically, the story is about um, the goddess Inanna or Ishtar, depends on whether mm-hmm. it's Sumerian or Akkadian. Mm-hmm. She is the Queen of Heaven, the goddess of all the good things. She's love, she's war, fertility, politics, divine law, everything. Mm-hmm. And then she gets called by, by Phoenicians, they call her Astarte, and then the Greeks call her Aphrodite, which is where it like, comes in with, which was where a different story like teeters into it. Mm-hmm. So Inanna or Ishtar is um, the, god of all, the goddess of all the good things, and then wanders down to the underworld at some point for various reasons like it differs per retelling of the story because stories drift over time Mm -hmm. so either she goes to the underworld to attend her brother-in-law's funeral Mm -hmm. or she goes because she's literally bored (laughs) <laughs> or she goes because she wants to get her dead husband back. Like there are all of these are versions. valid reasons. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> the thing is, though, when she like gets to the underworld, she can't just bust in. Like this is the underworld. There are mm-hmm. rules here. You have to obey the rules. Mm-hmm. So the queen of the underworld, which is a unique example because it's a singular queen and there is no co-ruler. I unique, love it already. Version. Her name is Eresh Kikal, which is essentially just Great Queen of the Earth. Mm-hmm. That is what her name means. Mm-hmm. And she tells Ishtar that she can only enter if at every gate of the seven she drops like one of her power symbols. And so she oh. ends up in the underworld and she is stuck. Without oh, her power. I can definitely see how that turned into like no you know what not aphrodite that reminds me of this is me not knowing what i'm talking about no, no. but this no, no. reminds me of um persephone a lot yes exactly uh, <laughs> this is I, I kind specialty. of love that the original version is that it's a woman going to see another woman like the two most mm-hmm. powerful femme beings like in the universe basically connecting oh, yeah. with each other kind of love that twist on things 
they were like the top dogs in the whole pantheon. It's very fun. Mm-hmm. But basically, the problem is because the goddess of fertility is stuck in the underworld, nothing oh. fertile is happening on Earth. Uh-huh. That's a problem. <laughs> so they send, like, they ask all the gods, like, can you please help? Please. please. Mm-hmm. And eventually they, they convince the god Ea or Enki, who is a creator god, to mm-hmm. create specifically gender ambiguous people to go down to the underworld, convince Eresh Kigal to let Inanna go. Oh. And well, the person in, in the Akkadian version is called Aso Shunamir, which mm-hmm. means they who are bright like the stars and like in beauty, they were super pretty, mm-hmm. especially. So they wander into the underworld. They convince Eresh Kigal to show them some of the water of life. And mm-hmm. they accidentally sprinkle some of on Ishtar, and they sprint to the exit, <laughs> <laughs> like picking up all Ishtar's like power symbols on the way. But obviously, like um, Ereshkigal is not happy about that. Mm-hmm. So in some versions, she does end up cursing Asu Tsunami and all people like them mm-hmm. with like being outcasts, like being different oh. from society. Interesting. But Ishtar is like, that sucks. Here is magic powers. <laughs> <laughs> so she You're is beautiful. Also... You're non-conforming. You have some and magic. here, now you can see the future. <laughs> <laughs> Which is it. super funny because, like, I have always felt like an outsider my whole mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. I was not one of the girls. I was not one of the boys. Mm-hmm. And I've always had weird dreams like, like, about random moments in the future. A little predictions. <laughs> This is your origin like, story. <laughs> exactly. Ishtar is also like the patron goddess of non-binary and gender non-conforming people. Mm-hmm. And like, she's one of the people I worship. <laughs> That's so cool. Like, I, have a, I have a list that she's on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. That is the cool. Yeah. I can't believe I've never. Actually, I can't believe I've never heard that story. <laughs> First of all, it's old. Second of all, it sounds like people mm-hmm. are trying to keep secrets. But oh, I yeah. think that that's awesome and brilliant that that is like one of the oldest stories out there that's it is. fabulous and it also relates in to greek mythology because like that trickles down across like the mediterranean in fun in different ways mm-hmm. so i mentioned ishtar's husband whose name is tammuz mm-hmm. now tammuz in um phoenician language is called adon which means mm. lords and adon gets to greek adonis Oh man! And Adonis it's- is related oh. again to Aphrodite and Persephone at uh-huh. the same time. Uh huh. Oh, which is where that comes from. <laughs> because Adonis' story is also that he dies and then gets stuck in the underworld, mm-hmm. like Tammuz. That is so interesting. They're all related. Everything's related. They are all- <laughs> it is. And there's a third story that's related to that. Which is like the weird thing in Greek mythology about the god Pan. I don't oh, know if you Pan. ever heard about. Yes, it. yes, yes. I have. It's isn't that the god like a... of like life and like like exactly. um... which is what Tammuz was. Oh yes. But then also there is this one thing about Pan where they say that he died. Oh yeah. And the thing about that is that they there was a sailor who heard from the land being called. Pan the Great is dead. And they, the mm. sailor was called Tamith. Oh. And Pan means all. So the thing that they probably heard was Tamus, the All Great, is dead. Okay. Because there was a cult about Adonis. And when I say cult, I really mean just like a old religion with like a specific membership. I don't mean the current yeah, derogatory the... thing. Yeah. Like, like a cult is just like a semi-secretive religion. I was so confused about what cult meant when I was doing the mermaid research because mm-hmm. it kept saying cult this and cult that. I'm like, that's rude. And then I then I realized, <laughs> yeah, no, then I it's, realized it's, it's not slang. <laughs> no, it's like the literal old religion is what yeah, the basically. behind it. Yeah, like there was a bunch of old cults about like various gods. Like Adonis had his yeah. own cult, yeah. which was based on the cult of Tammuz. And it's mm-hmm. about a god who dies and comes back to life and dies and comes back to life. 
Interesting. I'm just saying. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it sounds a little familiar to me. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like a whole bunch of uh, those kind of stories in Greek mythology because, like, in Greek mythology, you could like, kind of wander into the underworld. People do it all the time. There's a whole cult about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, the cult of Orphism, which is a semi mystery cult, we know some about it, but not all of it, mm-hmm. is specifically a cult that worships the people who went to the underworld and came back interesting that makes me wonder from like a I don't have this degree but like from a (laughs) sociology type of I don't have a sociology degree I just want to make that clear but like from a sociology standpoint if there were any kind of like substances that people would take that would give them the experience of visiting the underworld and coming back and then they were cons- they were like prophetized you know or prophetized i think is the right word i don't remember but i mean you're onto something there <laughs> i wonder because i i know that like every single drug well in my mm-hmm. work i do definitely work with like lots of like drug um usage Mm. disorders and things like that um and that's a whole other story but originally every single drug out there was used like religiously or like for Mm -hmm. faith-based connection and spirituality so it's just whenever it's an excess or you know certain strengths are not good for the body um but it's just kind of cool to think about like that's where my brain went to whenever you're talking about like oh people who were able to visit the underworld and return from it they were like kind of lorded over and it does Mm -hmm. make me wonder like how that was perceived like how that was possible like was it their corporeal body going there or was it their spirit going there like i don't know that depends on the story, but it's actually funny that you mentioned that specifically because, like, the Orphic cult mm-hmm. comes out of the cult of Dionysus. Oh, and this is the cult of wine, and yeah. these people would like mix oh. wine with some kind of substance, drink yes, that, would. get a crazy, stupid high, and experience like the power of Dionysus. And yeah. this is also the cult of people who were ostracized from society. Interesting. Queer people. Oh my god. This is, it all comes together. It all comes. I was like, it makes me. I'm having this like moment where it's like, it's all interlinked. Like, I feel like that person, <laughs> that person on. I mean, this is not. I don't agree with History Channel 99% of the time because they <laughs> kind of strayed away from truth. But you know that like mm-hmm. one meme of the guy like aliens, like with his hair all. <laughs> I feel. Yeah. I, I feel like that person where I'm like, it's all connected. <laughs> Yeah, we're like that one guy who was like, my blow gif. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is what makes my degree and also like my special interest really fun because it's all connected. It is. Well, you start noticing those patterns. You definitely have mm-hmm. a very specific skill where you're able to notice patterns, not just in language, but like it stems from the language, but you notice like fundamental patterns and other things too. Like, I think you mm-hmm. know quite a bit about like, faith religion history things like that those are kind of all intermingled in with language as well well i guess history yeah. can't be history unless there's written something so yeah i mean that is literally what it means it's recorded mm-hmm. history <laughs> mm-hmm. so it also cool. it like it like loops in back with um myself being queer because i am a asexual non-binary possibly aromantic entity mm-hmm. entity i and love it <laughs> I don't usually view myself as human, which is like weird to like experience sometimes. I'm just like I'm, I'm, a, that... I'm a being. Yeah, you are a being. Also, you're just like maybe you're like one of those star people. Who knows? You know, who's to say? <laughs> yeah, basically, that's like resulted in me having to explain my existence to people and be like, "No, we've always been there. Mm-hmm. See, here's proof." Mm-hmm. Because, like, I, almost every culture has, like, death deities and also mm-hmm. queer deities. Like, in mm-hmm. Japanese mythology, several gods were just, like, either male or female, whatever, depends on the story. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, the moon. The moon is gender fluid. Mm-hmm. They just are I remember in... hearing about that. And then if you think about, like, the whole, like, balancing, like, um, this isn't Japanese. I think this is Chinese, actually. But the yin and yang. It could also be, yeah. Or yin it's... and yang. I think that yeah, that's, yeah, like... That's combo like east 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 asia yeah Yeah. 
And so I think that there's like, there's a beauty in being able to find the balance between things or mm-hmm. not exist even within that spectrum at all. Like, yeah. um, it's just a very cool, and it's always existed as long as humans have been around. It's always yeah, existed. I mean, Egyptian mythology too, like most of the mm-hmm. gods have like a male or a female name. And sometimes it's interpreted as those being like two separate entities who may be siblings or spouses. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's the same entity, just like a different version of that. Version, Yep. I find that fascinating. So like Anubis also has like the female form Anuket. Mm-hmm. And Bess, who is a very funny looking god, you should look him up sometimes, <laughs> also has Bestet. And like you just like put in a uh, like this is how Egyptian language works. It's super weird. Like you put a, a suffix at the end, and it changes the gender of the of the entity. Interesting. That kind of reminds me of Spanish, just mm-hmm. because I know some sp- like a decent amount of Spanish, but like the O and the no, O. And... <laughs> Man, one of the language, one of the multiple languages you don't speak, you gotta you gotta get yourself together here, man. Like, I know. <laughs> How could you? I already speak four languages, and I translate dead languages. What's wrong with me? <laughs> like, I don't how speak do you Spanish. not know Spanish? I mean, I can sort of read it. I can sort of read it. <laughs> it's it's honestly because I know Latin. Really impressive. <laughs> of course, you know Latin. Yeah. The one that's I... dead. You know the one that's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have had seven years of Latin in high school, and also, like, because... I'm extra weird. I did a year of Latin in primary school. <laughs> oh my god! Of course you did. It's because yeah, I mean... it, it, it all ties back to you being a being, like an entity, yeah. where you're like, "This looks familiar to me." Meanwhile, it's like mm-hmm. your one thousandth rotation on this earth. <laughs> yeah, I'm just primordial goop, relearning everything <laughs> I've forgotten. Primordial no goop. gender, only space dust. <laughs> I saw that on your um yeah your stat or like the banner That's and I thought banner. that was so good. It's so good. Oh, so you mentioned how sometimes people can accidentally wind up in like other world and underworld situations and I think yeah. you have something that you like a story that you like from that. Okay, so Divos, this is a story that I basically learned about in my last year of my bachelor. I have cool. a bachelor's degree in comparative linguistics, so I did mm-hmm. Celtic languages for that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a one big epic story in Welsh mythology, which is super unknown. It's mm-hmm. like everybody knows a little bit about Irish mythology. It's like mm-hmm. the, the Fae and all that. Maybe even Cuchulain, you know, the, the Hound of Ulster, mm-hmm. sort of known. But in Welsh mythology, you have the story called the Mabinogion, which is a four-part epic tale cool. about a lineage. But it starts with uh, a guy called Pwys, mm-hmm. which is a Welsh name. <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> you write it as P-W-Y-L-L. <laughs> I was like, oh, I know it's Welsh. <laughs> I, can, I already know. Yeah. Cause I <laughs> there's no, there's I can... no vowels. <laughs> So Pwish is a prince of a uh, region in Wales. Uh, the region is called Dived. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, he's out hunting one day and gets lost in the woods, which mm-hmm. can happen because the woods are big. That's fair. And while he's like trying to find his way back, he encounters a deer that is being chased by white dogs with red ears. Interesting. And he chases the dogs off and kills the deer for himself. And then the oh. owner of the dog shows up. Oh. And he is, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he was—he was an idiot in the in the beginning, like a big idiot. <laughs> he's making so many bad decisions. Oh, so many! You have no idea. Like his first bad idea was getting lost. <laughs> <laughs> like first of all, you're already lost. We gotta yeah. not add to that. <laughs> So the owner of the dog shows up. I was like pretty pissed off about. I was like, "What are you doing? Those were my dogs, and that was my prey." And this guy, his name is Aron, mm-hmm. and he's either a king or a god, and that is also a thing that Christianity did because they are the ones who wrote it down, mm. and they changed all the gods to kings and queens. Interesting. You can only have one god. Of course, of course, of course. So Aron is king of Anuven. Anuven is. Literally the Welsh underworld or other world. It's like Ooh. a layer next to it. And he's like, Well, you're you're in Anuven. How did you end up here? It's like I got really lost. This story. Mm. <laughs> it's like, well, at least you're honest about it. <laughs> um <laughs> which is good because they are Fae. You should not lie to the Fae. That is mm-hmm. bad. 
Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, how about this? Um, You do something for me and I let you go. Oh. It's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. What, what do I do for you? You take my place for a whole year. Oh. And when the year is up, I come back and we take over the rest of Anu of, of Anuvi. Because there was another king there who was like his rival. Mm -hmm. It's like, sure, no problem. How am I going to convince everybody that I'm you then? It's like, magic. Uh -huh, so suddenly Aram looks like Pwish and Pwish looks like Aram. And Aram, like Pwish, Pwish goes to Aram's palace, meets mm -hmm. his wife, who is a wonderful brilliant like well-spoken woman mm -hmm. doesn't get a name oh like Saren... <laughs> wife her name is yeah. wife her, her name is wife and he spends the whole year with her and he talks and they have wonderful that conversations creeps like they... me out you should tell yeah, her who he there's... is that's a yeah little... there's a little bit about it but it's like mm. there's also the thing that he doesn't sleep with her like the whole year that mm. they're married okay they that... share the beds i feel better they don't about sleep. that now. That's actually, then, I'm reeling back my judgment now. I like it. Because <laughs> yeah, like he may be an idiot, but he's not a bad idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Giving like he gets himbo energy right now. Exactly. He's <laughs> such himbo. But like, so the year is up and then Aram comes back. And for the mm -hmm. first time, obviously, he gets together with his wife. And she's like, well, I haven't seen, you haven't touched me all year. It's like, what? <laughs> I haven't touched you all year? <gasps> what a bro. <laughs> <laughs> so Prish gets as reward that after his death he will like be around successor as king of, of oh, Anuvin. That's cool. So like that's that's his cool story. And he also like the story that after that is how he gets married, which is also a <laughs> disaster. <laughs> <laughs> and about his son, which is also a disaster. Oh, no. The legacy continues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like his wife is also probably a fake creature. Her name is Rhiannon. I like which Rhiannon. Is a, yeah, Rhiannon is like a, a normal-ish name in Wales and Ireland. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And basically, it's like she's riding on a horse and she's super pretty and smart and all that, like all the good stuff. And she has it's a nice name this time. <laughs> that's yeah, uh, that's because such Rhiannon a big is step special. Up. <laughs> <laughs> but like people try to catch up to her and she just keeps driving a riding ahead of them so they can't catch up mm -hmm. like her, no matter what they do her horse is just like magically faster interesting it's kind of like a it's, rainbow yeah kind of because eventually twish asks her if she maybe wants to pull over mm -hmm. and she's like oh you should have asked in the first place like buddy <laughs> i can't read your minds <laughs> And this they, is you called know, they... good communication. Exactly. <laughs> and they chat and they hit it off. Like, they are both not not, not the greatest at communicating. But, mm. you know, it, it's, it works out. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, whole trials about that. Because, like, there's somebody else who wants to marry her. And he is bad. Mm. So they have to trick oh, him into triangle. giving up. No, oh. it's kind of like it's it's like it's, you, she's betrothed to the other guy. Oh. And she doesn't want to marry him because he's an asshole. Well, that's fair. And then he's also a fey asshole, so that's tricky. That's oh man. Also, I'm sorry, but like it doesn't sound like Pwith is able to handle the tricking. It's no, up to Rhiannon to kind of trick her betrothed yeah. out of it so that she can be with Pwith. Cause yeah, they have to like do a whole trick trade thing to convince him that he can he should give up Rhiannon again because he has like this magic bag that he can fit anything in. <laughs> Like however much, like if you don't, I don't know if you play D and D, but like it's yes. a bag of holding. Basically. Oh, nice! So he comes to Rhiannon and Pwish's wedding, and he's like, "I'm just a poor beggar. Can I please have something?" And Pwish is an idiot. He says, "Sure, whatever you can fit in that bag." Oh my god! And he keeps going until uh -huh. like everything is gone. He's like, "Well, I'll only stop if you give me Rhiannon." I was like, "Fine." interesting yeah so like a year later he comes to Grianon and the other guys wedding as a beggar and it's like well with a similar bag mm -hmm. and it's like well only stop if like you if you make this bag stop and the only way to make the bag stop is to get into it and tell it off it's like, the other guy is what? also an idiot and does that <laughs> no and then he's stuck in the bag and the only way he's getting out is if he promises to leave them alone <laughs> So basically, just... everyone was just as annoying as possible <laughs> yeah. until someone gave up. It's yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> like he steal the whole whole wedding party, like all the decorations, all the all the treasures, all the food, all the drinks. It's all in the bag. This is and the ridiculous. only way I'll stop it is if you get in the bag. <laughs> 
That's really funny. It's like and all that because Push got lost one day. All, yeah, I was just about to say that. Where it's like it all started when some idiot wandered into the woods for some ungodly reason and just like flopped over on the other side. Like what in the yep. world? That's so funny. Well, it I'm is. really grateful for you telling me all of these stories. I know you have a shit ton more, and oh, I, sure. I, like, we we would just be sitting here all day. Well, I, I mean, I may have to start my own podcast. <laughs> you do. I would. I am yeah. so for this, especially if you like interpreted. <gasps> if you call it myth interpreted, I will scream with joy. You have to do that. I mean, now. that is probably the reason why I chose the name. <laughs> oh, I love it. I, honestly, I think you would love doing a podcast too, and I think a lot of people would like it. So, I mean, it would start... also like like get me more used to talking, like yeah, also publicly because yeah, it would anxiety. <laughs> oh, anxiety! I mean, that's how I I'm like I make myself super fucking comfy, and then mm. I talk to myself, and I know that it'll find I'm the good right at people. That. I have a mic. I could do that. Yes, you could. And that's why, you know, you will always hear Kachu purring because I'm in my most comfortable state, I guess. Mm. And like, that's how I record. Although sometimes you also hear the Babo and also sometimes you hear roosters. It's fine. Everyone's really loud whenever I'm recording now that I think about it. I'm like, I'm trying to be professional, guys. Well, before you go, I have a fun game we can play, but creepy other world related. (laughs) Your favorite thing. Okay, first question. Would you rather visit the underworld while still alive for a week or haunt our world as a ghost for a week? Okay, so that depends on which underworld it is. <laughs> I think you can pick. Okay, so if it's like if it's the Greek one, I'd be like, sure, as long as I don't eat anything, I'll be fine. Yes. I mean, that's going to be hard to not eat any. You're going to have to, like, pack. I mean, I can, I can bring food from above, which yeah, should bring be food. Right. Pack a lunchbox. If lunch it's, like, box. one of the Norse ones, uh-huh. I could dig it. It's just too much drinking for my liking, but, like, in, like, a fight. Uh... <laughs> the Norse gods party too hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most of the stories about Norse mythology are just the gods partying too hard. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, in Norse mythology, you have either Valhalla or Folkfanger, which are, like, two of the good places. And they also have, like, the place where drowned people go. <laughs> they have weird. four or five different underworlds. <laughs> That's perfect. You can just, like, maybe yeah. you could do, like, an itinerary where. Oops. Oh, second. I know. There's, like, underworld hopping. <laughs> <laughs> underworld hopping. That, honestly, if you wrote a like, book, like, island about hopping, that, I underworlds. I love that. You should totally write a book about that, too. Maybe I should. I'm just adding on to your docket of all the things that you need to do. Oh, all I, the have so, I have so many things to write. Creative writing <laughs> things you need to do. You know, on top of all your studies, because you have so much extra time. Yeah. I could also visit the Duats, which is the Egyptian underworld. It's pretty nice there. Most of really? The time. If you For some reason, snakes. I thought that was like, yeah. If I was like, and I don't mind snakes. snakes. <laughs> ignore no, this. There, there are nice places. There, there is like a specifically nice realm where Osiris rules. That is a, the, the field of reeds. It's a nice oh, place. Oh, I've heard of that. Actually, I think that was depicted in one of the Marvel movies, now that I think about it. Uh, what's his name? Um, Moon Knight. Yes, Moon Knight. Yes. Because Moon Knight is Egyptian. What underworld or otherworld ruler would you most want to meet? Mm, that also depends. <laughs> <laughs> you have this one is harder. You have to only pick yeah, one. There are so many. <laughs> I know. I mean, honestly, I mentioned her before. I would love to chill with Erish Kigal. Yeah, but she's just a, she's just a queen, like a whole boss babe. <laughs> she is a boss babe <laughs> in the positive like, way, not the negative yeah. way. I mean, she's just ruling there on her own. There are she has a few husbands, but they piss off or they die. <laughs> <laughs> it's like she has like a couple of those. But a, they don't play a big role. She has like three husbands. The last question is: If you could be any underworld creature, what would it be? <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I would like to be a god, which would be fun. I feel like that counts as a creature, right? Yeah. I mean, there's also like multi-headed dogs. Who yeah, are that's very like good server. boys. <laughs> they are very good boys. Very protective. I mean, yeah, I think I would probably go with Cerberus. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, he just gets to you know guard the underworld and also have three heads for biting people or get pets. <laughs> that's. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's like, you Which just be a good boy. Bites and then, or affection. <laughs> like, that's all you want to do is just either bite people or get affection. That goes right I mean, down to your nature. It's a summary. <laughs> <laughs> it's a summary. <laughs> Well, otherwise, I would be. I would like to be like, um, like Hecate or something, because Hecate be cool. is a goddess of witchcraft. Yeah, that would be a really Which good is one. Cool. That is really cool. I could totally see you having Hecate vibes, for sure. Yeah. Or just like one really, really obscure god, and be like, I'm just vibing over here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you don't know me. It's fine, but here's my cool power. But I'll be over here. Like, if you mm-hmm. want to pray to me or whatever. But if not, it's fine. Pray too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Well, thank you for your time, Jay. I appreciate You're all so you've welcome. discussed <laughs> and lending some of your expertise because you got serious good, like really good expertise here. It was totally yeah. fascinating. <laughs> Years of hyperfixating. <laughs> so many years. You, I like your hyperfixations. I think they're Thank very you. valid, and I'm super thankful that you were willing to share them on the podcast, because now so we welcome. get to hear about it. You're so welcome. <laughs> Thanks to all you spooky souls out there for listening to Creepy Core and Folklore. Follow on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok if you're looking for more uncanny content. If you have your own tales to tell, you can email creepycoreandfolklore at gmail.com. If you liked this, please leave a review wherever you get your podcasts, or tell a friend who might enjoy these stories to spread the word. If you're interested in dark fantasy, check out my Hollowverse series. Ashes is available now in paperback and ebook on Amazon and audiobook on Audible, and the sequel is underway. I'm Iona Wayland and I'll see you next time.